What's up, everyone? Okay, this is a uh, another primer lesson here of music theory that everyone should know. Okay, uh, before I start, I have a discount code for my store. Anything in my store, DJ Green Arrow, great to see you. RB900, 30% off everything. I want everybody to have the Beato book to understand these basic principles of theory. We're gonna go fast, but you can always stop this stuff, rewind it, watch it at half speed, whatever you need to do. I'm not gonna play, I mean, I'll demonstrate some things on my guitar here uh, so you can hear the sound of it, but we're gonna move quickly here. Pause the video, look at it, whatever you need to do, but it's all in my book. It will make sense more when you read it over and over. There's a lot of memorization, I also have coffee mugs for sale that have music theory on them. They have the modes of the major scale and they have the keys. There's about six different ones, okay? Okay, this is the key of C. These are the triads in the key of C and they are called the primary chords. Now, I just did a video about the 10 levels of harmony. There's really 100 levels of harmony or hundreds of levels of harmony. But some of the basic things I did, I took a one, six, four, five progression and I talked about how to reharmonize those four chords. So we use this thing called Roman numeral, Roman numeral analysis and in Nashville, they call it the Nashville numbering system. These are the numbers of the chords, okay? They use uppercase Roman numerals like that to indicate a major chord, lowercase Roman numerals to indicate a minor chord, and here on the seventh, it's minor plus we make it diminished, okay? Those are the primary chords in the key of C. By the way, uh, all the people like Griselda that, that leave uh, super chats, thank you. I won't be able to answer questions because I want to go quickly on this, okay? I want to talk about this really quickly. Um, but I appreciate that. Okay, so the first thing that I did, so I talked about the one, six, four, five progression, okay? So that means in the key of C, C major, A minor, F major, G major. I did it in B flat in the video. Uh, then you have your secondary chords, your secondary dominant chords. These are chords that are related. Think of this as your the primary colors and then the secondary colors, okay? So your primary colors are uh, uh, <laughs> red, blue, and yellow, right? Is that right? Yeah. Now, when you mix the primary colors together, when you mix um, uh, blue and red together, you get green, right? Is that right? Oh, geez, am I screwing this up? You know the analogy here. Okay, so your secondary chords in the key are A. These are called secondary dominants. I'm gonna put SEC dominants, okay? These are actually related by fifth to the primary chords. B major, C major, D major, and E major, okay? There is no secondary dominant to the seventh chord because it's an unstable chord. Uh, I talked in the video about this concept that there are tonic chords, there are uh, predominant chords and dominant chords, okay? Your tonic chords in a major key are one, three, and six. What dominant chords do? They wanna move somewhere. So these secondary dominant chords here want to move to their primary chord, okay? That's why you get progressions like C uh, major to A major, then D minor to G major, right? Okay, so this is a secondary dominant. This is called a five of two. And this is your two chord, this is your five chord, this is your one chord, okay? This is a very common progression. So the five of two, the secondary dominant chord, wants to move to its primary chord. The chord that falls on the, on the note A in the C major scale is actually A minor, but we've made it A major, okay? So I'll show you here. So if you have a, um, the primary chord, so if we did C, A minor, D minor, G, that would be one, six, two, five. This, with the, with the secondary dominant A major, it's gonna be one, a major six, or five, seven of two, or five of two, to two, to five. So listen to the difference. Here's the primary chords. One, six, two, five, one, five, 
seven of two to five, okay? Different sound. The, the secondary dominant chord has a, that half step that helps you lead into D minor in a stronger fashion. Half step resolutions are always the strongest, okay? So each of these uh, secondary dominant chords, let's say we did a, a, a different one. Let's say we had, um, I'll, I'll play you the sounds of them. Okay, so let's say um, one, five, seven of two, to two, to five, seven, five, uh, I won't say five, seven, these are just triads. One, to five of two, to two, to five of three, to three, to f f uh, five of four, to four, to five of five, to five, to five of six, to six. Okay? Now, you guys hear these things all the time in music, right? Uh, you might only have one to five of three, to three. Or you might have one to five of four to four. Or you might have one to f uh, five of five to five. Or one to five of six to six. That's in thousands of songs. These secondary dominant chords are used all the time. It's a way to strengthen your chord progressions and make them more interesting, okay? So uh, this is, um, uh, these, are, these are how you get much more interesting chord progressions, all right? So these secondary dominants are always a fifth away. So this A is a fifth away from D, B is a fifth away from E, C is a fifth away from Fs, okay? D is a fifth away from G, E is a fifth away from A, okay? That's how this works. This is how you memorize them. So if I were to change the key, uh, let's say we did a different key. You'd have to go, we'll go like this. Let's say we took the key of, um, I don't know. Let's say we take the key of, uh, key of G, okay? And I write out the primary chords. So that would be G major. You always have to memorize your, um, uh, memorize the order of, of chords, right? G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor, F sharp diminished. Now, how do I know this? Well, I know all the notes in the key of G major, okay? This is your one chord, two chord. Remember, two is minor, three is minor, four is major, five is major, six is minor, and seven is diminished, all right? Always run, uses the same order. Okay, so, so these are your primary chords. Now your secondary chords are always gonna be a fifth away from two, three, four, five, and six. A fifth away from A minor is gonna be E major. A fifth away from B major is F sharp major. These are all major chords, right? So this is your uh, five of two. This is gonna be your five of three. Your five of four Okay, what's a fifth away from C? G major. That's your five of four. Uh, five of four. Then you have um, A major, which is your five of five. Then you have B major, which is your five of six. Okay? Always a fifth away. A is a fifth away from D. G is a fifth away from C. F sharp is a fifth away from B. E is the fifth away from A minor, okay? So these are your secondary dominants. Now you can also have secondary dominant seventh chords, okay? So that, in order to have that, you just put a seven here and you make these all seventh chords. And these are be called secondary dominant sevenths, okay? All I've done is I've added a third in the top of all these chords, okay? So you've got... Um, um, so in the key of G, you got G major to E7 to A minor, to F sharp seven to B minor, to G7 to C, to A7 to D, to B7 
to E minor. Sounds like I'm doing a Simon and Garfunkel song every time I do that. Um, that that's a lot, a lot of time. I mean, Paul Simon would use a lot of these secondary dominance in his in his songs. So would people like Sting, the Beatles, they use all the all these kind of things. Okay, now let's talk about some other types of simple uh, chord substitutions that you see commonly in music. For example, the four minor chord. Many of you have heard that, the four minor chord. Okay, so let me go back to the key of C because people were complaining that I didn't do stuff in the key of C before. So I'm going to go C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor. Whoops. Let me do it like this. Make sure that you guys can see all these. A minor and B diminished. Okay. Okay, so this is one, two. The, the repetition is really where you get this stuff. Four, five, six, and seven. Okay. Now, when somebody says a four minor chord, that means the chord that's normally there is major. If I were to make it minor, that would be F minor, and you'd write it like this. You just use a lowercase four minor. That's a borrowed chord from a different key. Uh, four minors are typically used in the Beatles and things like that. So a four minor would be like this. Usually four minors follow four majors. Uh, so, if I had a progression like this, uh, let's say I would go one, four, four minor, one, okay? So um, one, six, four, four minor, one. Okay, so that's the parallel, somebody said that, parallel minor. Uh, but four minor chords, you can have a five minor, you can have a, 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 a three major. What would be an example of three major? I'll tell you. A three major would be like this. It'd be, sorry, it'd be E major. Okay, and you write it like this. So where would you use a three major? Well, you could use it like this. Um, Okay, so what did I just do there? I used a three major and I used a four minor. Okay. So uh, that chord progression is like Radiohead, like in, um, um, what is it? Uh, their first single. A creep, yeah. Thank you. It's not in that key, actually. So it's got two borrowed chords, two parallel major, or they have a parallel major chord and a parallel minor chord. Okay, so that's... That's where these things come from. That's uh, when you say parallel, it's when you make major minor or minor major. So all of these things, in addition to secondary dominance, you can have parallel major and minor. Man, I can't spell parallel very well. I'm just gonna wrote P-A-R, parallel. Okay, so let me talk about your parallel chords here. You'd have C minor, D major, E major, F minor, G minor, A major, and we won't worry about B, okay? So these are all your parallel majors and minors, okay? So you've got one minor, two major, three major, this is fun, uh, four minor, five minor, uh, six major, right? So for you songwriters out there, um, this these are incredibly helpful. Just right here, just taking just the basic chords of C major 
taking the parallel uh, major or minor. So I've, I'm taking the parallel, meaning I'm making what if it's major up here, I make it minor down here. If it's minor up here, I make it major down here. That's it. OK, so uh, if you just know those and you know your secondary dominant chords, right? And I did this a um, a B major, C major, D major, and E major. Okay, those are your secondary dominant chords, right? This is five of two, five of three, five of four, five of five, and five of six. Okay, this little matrix here that I just created, uh, you could write hundreds and hundreds of songs without ever leaving this. Okay, this is all in my Beato book. Discount code is RB900, 30% off anything in my store, but the Beato book especially. I want you guys to have this so that you can understand this. These are the most important basics of music theory to know, just knowing uh, what chords are in what key, what the parallel majors and minors are, and what the secondary dominants are. If you just know that, you can write hundreds of different chord progressions. Pretty much most pop popular music is found within these. Well, frankly, honestly, most jazz is too. Okay, in jazz, you get some fancy dominant chords. You get some fancy. They add nines and elevens and thirteens to chords, but those are just those are just ways to color the chords so they sound a little bit more interesting. Okay, this is before we get into third related uh, keys and things like that. But these are the basic, basic, basics of chord progressions. Okay. Well, then you'll say to me, well, okay, Rick, well, how do I even know what notes are in keys? Well, that you have to memorize the circle of fifths. And the circle of fifths, um, just like the, the, the chords in a major key, we're not even talking about minor keys now. We're just talking about major keys. The circle of fifths is something you need to memorize, okay? You have to memorize the order it goes in. C major, G major, D major, A major, E major, B major, F sharp major, D flat major, A flat major, E flat major, B flat major, F major. I just went around it. How do I know that? Because I've written it a million times. These are things that you uh, memorize. Somebody asked me, is this a Starbucks espresso? It is actually, it's a Starbucks, it's a coffee with almond milk actually, that's what it is. Um, so, uh, um, there, there is a certain amount of memorization. You have to memorize those chords in that order, those keys in that order, and then you have to memorize how many sharps and flats are in them. When you start on C, there are zero. I'm gonna talk about it, okay? So, you guys have this. So, if you memorize the circle of fifths, and you memorize your, um, and you memorize uh, ma major keys that one, four, and five, like a blues, are major. Two, three, and six is minor, and seven is diminished. That's all you have to do. My first lesson ever, my first guitar lesson, my my teacher Glenn said, uh, he said, ma in major keys, he wrote a little chart like this. He he goes, major chords in a key are one, four, I have it still in a book, in the old Ernie Ball book, five. Minor are uh, two, three, and six, and then diminished is seven. And you put a little box around it there. And I just, as soon as I saw him do that, I was like, oh, wow, it's that easy? One, four, five, two, three, six, and then seven. The piece of cake, right? Like I never forgot it. All I needed to do was see it one time, and I had it. Then he said, "Okay, you got to learn the circle of fifths because you got to know what notes are in each key because you have to create the scales in order to plug this chord progression uh, uh, 
legend in, okay? So then he wrote down, the second thing he wrote down for me was the circle of fists. I think actually that was the first thing that he wrote. You wrote, draw a circle and it's a clock, okay? There are 12. One, two, three, four. That, 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 that. There's my 12, right? Okay, you start with C major here. You put F sharp major down here. Okay, F sharp G flat. All right, so C major has zero sharps or flats. Then you go G, D, A, E, B. That's on the sharp side. And then on the flat side is D flat, e, uh, A flat, E flat, B flat, and F. Okay? These are all sharps. So this has one sharp, two sharps, three sharps, four sharps, five sharps. Sorry, my circle's not very good. Six sharps or six flats, five flats, four flats, three flats, two flats, one flat. Okay? Okay, so this is your circle of fists. Well, you say, well, okay, G major has one sharp. Well, what sharp is it? Okay, that's why you have to know your order of sharps and flats. And we're not talking about the keys of C flat major or F flat major. You don't have to worry about those. I mean, you, once you understand this, you'll know you'll already know those. Okay, so your order of sharps. Uh, people have certain uh, uh, things for them. I'm sure that some people will, will write in the com uh, in the uh, comment section here. But your sharps go in this order. Um. F sharp, C sharp, oh, geez. when you say something, you do something else. C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, E sharp, what? Oh, hate that. E sharp and B sharp. If you memorize this, these are all related by fifths. F sharp to C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, E sharp, B sharp. If I reverse the order, then you have the order of flats. So B flat, right? I'm just going backwards now. E flat, A flat, D flat, G, uh, G flat, C flat, and F flat. That's actually seven. So if you remember, if you memorize that right there, the order of sharps and flats, you'll know. Key of G has one sharp, it's F sharp. Key of E flat has three flats, B flat, E flat, A flat. Key of E has four sharps, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp. Key of F has one flat, B flat. Key of A flat has four flats, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat. You just plug in the numbers then, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you memorize that, you can figure out any scale. So uh, if I want to know what a G major scale is, it's all the regular notes with one sharp, F sharp. So you go G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and there's your G major scale. Key of D has two sharps, F sharp, C sharp. So when those notes happen in scale, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. You just plug them right in. B, F major has B flat in it. F, G, a, B flat, C, D, E. There's your F major, okay? So once you can create those scales, once you have that stuff memorized, then you just plug in the major and minor keys, uh, uh, major and minor chords that happen in the key and that one diminished chord, and then write down your, your parallels and then write down your secondary dominance. Okay, so we're gonna pick a key here. Let's say, uh, uh, we'll, we'll take A major, okay? So we're gonna take A major. Now, A major has three sharps in it. So I'm gonna leave the sharps down here, sharps and flats. Write out all the letter names, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's how I usually teach people. Just write out the letter names and then put in where the, where the sharps or flats are. This has three sharps, C sharp, F sharp, G sharp, right? You go down here. Uh, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp. So the first three, you plug them in. They don't, they don't all, fall, they don't fall in the same order. It's not F sharp is not first, you know, because it's there in the scale. It happens to be where, wherever it lays in the scale. 
Once I do that, then I go like this. I go, so this is the key of A, right? So then I go A, B minor, C minor, D major, there, there, and there, there. There we go. So I just put in my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? Then I go in and I say, okay, well, what are my uh, parallel chords, right? A minor, B major, C sharp major, D minor, E minor, uh, F sharp major, and we don't worry about that. And then what are my, our secondary chords, secondary dominance? Okay, F sharp major, uh, uh, and then G sharp, D, uh, D is going to be A, E is going to be B, and F sharp is going to be C sharp, okay? This will give you pretty much everything that you're going to need to know about any chord progression. So if you're writing a tune or analyzing a tune, you're like, oh, let me see, where can I go here? I'm really bored with this progression. You're playing around, you're like, you're playing on your keyboard, you're programming something, you know, you're dragging little MIDI bars around because you're doing some EDM music. And you don't want to do one, six, four, and five. You say, well, what other keys do you do? Then you make a little chart like this. You figure out which key you're in, make a little chart with your parallels and then your secondary dominance and grab a key, grab a chord from one of those other keys and see if it fits in there nicely. Um, what would a good use of a diminished chord be? Well, that's going to be for another episode because this is a lot of information to take in at once. You need to think of some great mnemonic devices for these. I'm sure some people have been pasting them in here, but, um, but I'm going to leave you with this. Discount code on the Beato book, RB900. Follow me on Instagram at rickbeato1. I just hit 100,000 followers on Instagram. I'd like everybody here to follow me there if you can, those of you that, that don't mind uh, Instagram. I want you to ring the bell here. This is a really important thing. Only about 12% of people that follow my channel ring the bell. Do you know why I know that? Because 12% of people ring the bell on YouTube channels. That's it. That's it. That's the average. It's like 12 to 20 percent. So or 11 to 20 percent. So I'm figuring it's probably 12 percent here or maybe it's 10 to 20 percent. Ring the bell and follow my channel. You know what? The number one thing on my channel that's searched is my name, which means that people type in my name to go to my channel because they don't have the notifications because people always check back because I put out so many videos, which is cool. But it would be better if people actually had the notification thing on here because there'd be a lot more than 1,300 people on here right now. There should be 10,000 people on right now if people clicked the bell, okay? So... Do it right now while you're thinking about it. Ring the bell. Go to the thing and where it says that's subscribed and hit that. It's, it's, um, it's actually important for all the YouTube channels that you like, not just my channel. If you follow, follow Adam Neely, if you fo follow Nari Soul, if you follow uh, uh, you know, PewDiePie, whoever, ring the bell. Okay, you guys are the best. That's all for now. RB900, support the channel. You can buy anything there, but really get the Beato book so you can follow along. You guys are awesome. Ring the bell. Thank you. Follow me on Instagram at Rick Beato one We'll see you guys later. Have a great Sunday. Bye.